Hi, everyone. I'm Heather Paduska, star maker for entrepreneurs who want to unlock their potential, command any stage, and make blockbuster profits. Welcome to Thrive, the show where I bring you tips, resources, and people to help you create a brand that makes you happy and profitable. Here we go. Hi, everyone. I'm Heather Padaska, founder of the Brand Star Academy, where we teach entrepreneurs how to be industry stars and profitable speakers. Welcome to this episode of Thrive, How to Master Authentic Beauty with my guest, Chris Scott. Chris Scott is a celebrity makeup artist and the owner of Makeup Gourmet. He's traveled the globe working with models, celebrities, and major influencers like Vice President Al Gore, Sir Paul McCartney, Shirley Temple, and Maya Angelou, just to name a few. He has decades of experience in the beauty industry. He got his launch with Chanel and worked his way up to be a national artist. And he now has a book called Face with a Heart, Mastering Authentic Beauty Makeup. And I was so thrilled to have Chris on the show today because if you want to be an industry star, if you want people to look at you and say, who is she? Who is he? You need to have your look down. And makeup is a really big part of that. So on this episode, we talked about how do you really create that star look that reflects your authenticity, whether you want to be more natural or more glamorous for speaking on the stage or on camera or in the media. And Chris had so many great tips, specific tips, like how to make your eyes wider and brighter, wider and brighter, how to make your lips look fuller, how to make your skin look more youthful. Who doesn't want that? But we also talked about Chris's story about how he got his foot in the door working with major influencers and celebrities. And more importantly, how you can get your foot in the door and what you need to do to keep your foot in the door so that people see you as the expert they want to work with again and again. I had so much fun talking to Chris. He's great and such a sweetheart. I hope you really enjoy this episode of Thrive. And in other news, we have some exciting things going on here at the Brand Star Academy. I'm going to be launching my Stage Ready Masterclass. That's for entrepreneurs who want to be powerful, profitable speakers. It's a live event where entrepreneurs get on stage and get training in their performance, their body language, their talk, and we learn to craft a signature talk that sells. We work on how to close the room in a way that feels really authentic to you and helps your audience really open up to you and your services. We talk about how to engage and perform and connect emotionally. So by the time you leave, you feel like a powerful, confident, charismatic speaker, whether you're speaking on stage, online, or in the media. And we're also including media-specific training so that you know how to act in front of the camera, how to communicate in front of the camera, but also strategies on how to get on a national media circuit. It's going to be really amazing, so much fun, and you're going to get feedback that you don't get when you're going out speaking in public because when you're speaking for a conference or or wherever, people don't come up to you afterwards and say, you know, if you had just done this, I would have really bought your service. People don't do that. And in this masterclass, you do get that feedback from me, but also from your colleagues there who are there for the same reason, giving really valuable first-time feedback to you. So if you're someone who is ready to launch a national presence online, in the media, and on big stages, and you really want to polish your performance skills and your sales skills, I really encourage you to check this out. You can get more information by emailing me directly at heather at clearvoicebranding.com. Okay, back to the show. I hope you enjoy Chris as much as I did and enjoy this episode of Thrive. Hi, everyone. I'm Heather Paduska, and welcome to Thrive, the show where I bring you tips, resources, and people to help you create the business and life you've always wanted. You're in for high-value content coming to you from industry leaders who are growing their business, making an impact, and rocking their brands. I'm thrilled to have with me today Chris Scott. Chris is the creator of San Francisco-based Makeup Gourmet. Over nearly 30 years of his career, in addition to doing makeup for top models, 
models from every corner of the planet, he also had the honor of working for legends like Paul McCartney, U.S. Vice President Al Gore, Shirley Temple Black, Maya Angelou, and Olympic gold medalist Oksana Bayou and Christy Yamaguchi. He was the creator and host of the TV show Makeup Gourmet from 2008 to 2010. He was the leading Chanel Bote Bute national artist for over two decades, and also the creator and guest teacher of fashion makeup at the Academy of Art University in San Francisco. He created his unique makeup gourmet line to ensure his clients and the public could have access to high quality, ethically produced green makeup and skincare with a low carbon footprint. Chris is also the author of the wonderfully visual how-to book, Face with a Heart, Mastering Authentic Beauty Makeup. Welcome, Chris. I'm so excited to have you here. Well, thanks so much. I'm trying to get my light just right. <laughs> You're gorgeous. You're gorgeous. Right. Right. Great makeup. Half of it's lighting anyway, right? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't hurt. <laughs> so, um, I'm really excited to talk about your book. I have your book. I've, you know, taken lots of tips from it. Talk to us a little bit about your book, um, Face with a Heart, because I know there's a story behind that. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Well, sure thing. Like, uh, sure thing. Like any of us who have done something for a long time, uh, we really like to find a way to pass it on, to share it with other people. And uh, that's what this book really did for me. It's when I start when I created the uh, fashion makeup class at the Academy of Art, um, I decided I was just going to write the book. I was teaching makeup for a long time, teaching makeup artists. And I said, you know, they always ask, you know, do you have all this in writing? And I'm like, no, but I will. And so I spent about four years. I finally said, OK, I'm going to go for it because my approach to makeup is um, unique uh, in terms of how how I see beauty and uh, people's relationship with makeup. And I really, in the book, I really try to project that. I want people to understand. I want, I want to have, let them have a different relationship with makeup, basically. And then the book was like a four-year, you know, like marathon to, to create, produce, and then eventually become an international number one bestseller, which, you know, really is validates what I think that I want to share with people. Cool. So talk to us a little bit. You said you have a unique view on beauty. What is that view? So makeup is abused for the most part, especially in store when people are trying to show you makeup. If you don't see the makeup, then the makeup's not good is, is kind of the, uh, the old, old way of thinking. Um, my way of thinking is we want to see you, not the makeup. So how do we how do we use makeup to see you more clearly as opposed to how do we use makeup to change the way you look? Mm -hmm. um, and so I have, so I, people pretty much walk away kind of scratching their head when I do lessons with them because they're like, I'm using about one tenth of the makeup that I usually use. And I look a hundred, you know, thousand times better than I ever have with makeup on. What did you do? Um, and, and I mean, I would say, you know, it's all in a book because there's, a, you know, there's a lot of steps that go to it, but mostly makeup is applied on the face and, and, and spread down. I work from the skin and I, and I move outward in very thin layers. Understand that your skin is very, very thin. If any layer of makeup that you put on in your application is thicker than your skin, then the makeup isn't part of you, it's on you. And so you have to find a way to deliver. It's okay if you have multiple layers that are skin thin, but they need to be skin thin. And so you have to change the amount you use and how you use it. Mm -hmm. if that, so, does that make sense? Yeah, I think that the whole idea of second skin just took on a different meaning for a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it, it, so here's the trick. I don't use concealers or I use concealers very little. Uh, in the, in old school, here's your skin, here's your concealer, because we want to cover up what we don't want to see. But I use correctors. So correctors are colors that are, you know, contrast to what we want to neutralize in your skin. So here's your skin and here's the corrector. And so we still see skin, but the corrector, the color of the corrector, I use pink, green, yellow, orange. What they do is they neutralize and brighten the skin. So skin actually looks younger because when skin reflects light better, it's a younger looking skin anyway, but we still see skin. And so you're not wearing, you know, so much makeup. When I do makeup, 80% of my foundation is corrector. 
And I think of foundation as a top coat, like when you get your nails done, just to bring out the luster of your skin as opposed to, let me put my foundation on so I, there, there's my, there's my skin. No, that's not your skin. But, but people don't use correctors, so they, that's why they're taught to use foundation in that way. But when they understand how correctors work and how you can direct the traffic of light on your skin, which is something I talk a lot and teach in my book, it's amazing how you can have people look exactly where you want them to look and really illuminate your face. And I would say that, you know, looking at you today, beautiful face with a heart. You have a nice balance through. Um, do you mind me talking about your domain? <laughs> no, I'm fine I mean, to be because, because it's just a. <laughs> Because so you have a lot of good light coming right through your face right here. Your blush happens just outside the heart line. So what that what happened? What that means is we're not distracted by anything on your face, and so we see you more clearly. And that's really the the point of wearing good makeup. It's not like wearing no makeup. It's really just you know understanding intensities of color and placement. Uh, and and you're a good example of it. Thank you. I take that as high praise coming from you. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. <laughs> so what do you say to people who say, I, I don't like to wear makeup. I just want to look natural. Well, then they, well, but do they want to wear makeup, but they don't like it? Is that the thing? Well, I don't know. I mean, some people don't like to wear makeup and some people I think are afraid of makeup because they don't want to look like a clown. Right. But yeah. they want, I hear a lot. I hear a lot of women say, I just want to look natural. Right. So. I I get that. Mm -hmm. So well, I, you know, I work with a lot of clients and the reason they come to me is, I mean, a lot of them will say, I don't like makeup. I don't wear makeup. You know? And when I, I do a makeup interview before I start working with them and I, first the question I ask them is, do you like makeup? Because if you don't like makeup, we have to approach your relationship with makeup differently than someone says, I love makeup. Because mm -hmm. someone who loves makeup, every, you know, their brush is constantly going into the palette. And every time that brush comes to their face, there's more color coming up on their face. And it's a little, you know, I have to break them of that habit. Mm -hmm. People who don't like makeup or are afraid to use it, they're easier to teach because they don't have, you know, built in muscle memory that, um, <laughs> you know what I mean? I I'm, love it. I have the muscle memory. So, so what I tell people is, all right, I'll tell you what, let's just, let's do the minimal. And we're really going to work on helping people see you better as opposed to people seeing your makeup. And what's always amazing to me, I mean, always, is that that person who you're talking about, who obviously they, they want to do something, but they're not sure if makeup is the answer. Once we start working and they see themselves, they go, I look good. They don't say the makeup looks good. They say, I look good. And they go, well, well, what else can I do? So they actually start to, you know, they go, well, what kind of eyeshadow should I wear? They, they start asking for more makeup only because they realize that it doesn't have to be something that is in addition to your face. It's really part of your face. You apply makeup to your anatomy, not to your face. And I know that sounds weird, but once you understand the structure of your anatomy, makeup is, is part of your face, not uh, like in spite of your face, I guess. So this is going to sound like a funny question, but why should people wear any makeup? No all? reason. I mean, so the world we live in, right? In terms of say, if you're a professional and you meet with clients, you want people to have um, confidence in you. Um, and really it's just about not get, for me, it's getting rid of the distractions. More, I mean, just as much as enhancing the attractions, but those are the two things that I that I do. So if you don't want to wear makeup and your lifestyle doesn't, you know, ask you to, then why would you? You know, if you don't like walnuts, why would you eat walnuts? Uh, <laughs> so I would say, you know, there's plenty of people that like makeup out there, but I, my, um, my. But why mission, would somebody? Why? What is? What does makeup do for the face? It helps people see you more clearly. And what I, what I love is, um, is that when I do, say, a natural look or a mm -hmm. more balanced professional or dramatic look, I use almost the same amount of makeup. Really? It's not, oh, I want to dramatic, so I want to wear more. No, you look at your color intensity, meaning your eye, iris color, your skin tone, your hair color, and it's how much the colors, the intensity of the colors that you're wearing that they contrast your natural color intensity promotes either a natural, you know, professional or dramatic look. It's not more makeup. It's, you know, so it's, what, uh, your eyes are green or blue. What are they? They're, 
Bluish green, right? Bluish green, right? So I look at the intensity. I don't look at the color so much, but I would say you have medium light eyes, right? So if I use like a medium light to like medium eyeliner on you, it's going to be very soft. I'm still going to be attracted to your eyes because the liner is slightly darker than your iris. But when you go with, say, a, you know, a black brown or a black liner, it really contrasts your, your eye color. So there's more of a, of a contrast. So I'm more drawn to that. You're not wearing more makeup, just the intensity is different. Wow. So the contrast so that you're saying that the contrast makes the intense makes the drama versus the softer. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. And, and that's so you don't have to wear more makeup. You, you know, you wear colors that are closer together or farther apart. And that mm. farther apart is dramatic, closer together is more natural. I love it. That's a great tip. Yeah, well, it works. Yeah. <laughs> that's the best thing, is it works. So speaking of drama, you've had the pleasure and honor of working with people who are in the movie industry and who are very high profile. How did you get involved with Hollywood and, you know, Vice President Al Gore? How did that come about? Yeah, well, I, hmm, I, something I never really sought out. Um, I, I was very high profile with Chanel. I was a national artist doing fashion shows, working on, you know, I got a really good training. So I became very confident with my makeup skills pretty early on because I, 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 I was very fortunate. And when I was hired, because they trained me so well, um, I tried working in that scene, the Hollywood scene. And I really, literally, it took me one day to realize this isn't, this isn't me. Um, what was it? What about it wasn't you? So, you know, um, putting celebrities on pedestals um, doesn't work for me. Mm -hmm. You know, we all work. We all have jobs. You know, you know, why, why isn't there an award show for doctors and teachers and that kind of thing? But only for, you know, for people in, in the entertainment industry. I, I think there's a if there's a real disconnect. And and so, the, you know. The whole idea that, you know, this person is more special than that person doesn't work for me. It never has. I'm a real sort of equal opportunity person. So I realized that I just like working with, you know, everyday people. But mm -hmm. I, I'm a good makeup artist. And so what happens is, um, you know, your name gets around and somebody calls you and, and, and says, hey, you know, are you available because so-and-so, you know, needs makeup done? And I'm very, you have to be discreet because I've sat, you know, in rooms with politicians at election time and they're having discussions that I should not be hearing. <laughs> and they act like I'm not there. Mm. I mean, they're mm. saying things about other people and what their plans are. And, uh, and never once do they turn to me and say, oh, this can't be repeated. It's like understood. Mm -hmm. that, and and that's you have to be like that. So in one sense, you have to be good, but you also have to be, you know, you because I'm not a let's say a. I mean, of course, I personally, I completely, you know, uh, I, I admire Al Gore, Pres Vice President Al Gore, very much. So the honor to do his makeup was, you know, awesome for me. But I, but I don't sit there and go, oh, Vice President Al Gore, oh, yeah, you're so cool. I, instead, it's just do your job, get it on, make sure it looks good. And that's it. So reputation means a yeah, lot in I, terms of how you deal with, you know, that status of person. Reputation, being good at what you do, being discreet, being trustworthy. So I have a question since you brought up the election. Um, how are how would you rate or change or advise Hillary Clinton with her makeup? <laughs> well, um, I mean, I think... Is it working for her? Is she, do you think she's drawing people in with her makeup? Is the she repelling? I change on her, and I think I've seen her do it a couple times, is because she's uh, in the media and it uses so much high definition, she needs to have on airbrush foundation. Mm. Um, and any kind of, because, you know, high definition shows four times more information than our naked eye can, can, can see, can pick up. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing more makeup on her than she actually has on because the information is so high you, uh, on, on, on screen. Does that make sense? So we say that again. We're seeing more makeup on her than it's actually there. Right. If you saw her in person, you would go, oh, she looks good. But on camera, 
because we see four times the information, we we see more of the makeup. It's like when I'm doing someone's makeup and I go, oh, here, let me move in. And I put on my my readers and I move in and everything gets magnified, right? And I go, oh, there, that's better. You know what I mean? Because, you know, the pores get bigger and everything gets bigger. But that's what HD does is it, it amplifies things. So mm -hmm. you really just, you want to, smooth skin reflects light. And and reflecting light, light from within the skin, what skin that's full of water is a young looking skin. That's what young skin is. It isn't. You don't have to be young to have young skin. You have to um, you take care of your skin. Keep water in your skin. You have to take off the dead skin cells, and and, and use products that don't block the life of your skin, but actually you know sort of celebrate it, if you will, so that the so the so we can. We can see almost in your skin, translucent skin is what you want. We can see, so the top layer isn't stopping us from seeing what's inside, because what's inside is where the water and the oxygen is, and that's light, and light is young skin. Mm. So would you advise against um, those light catching, illuminating, what are those things that, that sparkle? No, they're no. fun. They're but, fun. You know, you, be conscious of where you use them, because that's where people are going to look. You know, if there's sparkly, sparkly happening, people are going to look on, right? So you so those are good. by your eyes. So I always find a little catch off the cheekbone mm. is kind of good. I don't like any shimmer, any glow too much in the heart of the face mm -hmm. because it just it just distracts me from your eyes and lips, and those are your communicators. So you by the heart, you mean. You mean this, right? Yeah, I think of the brows as top of the heart and then from the eyes down past the lips. Mm -hmm. And so in my you know, makeup technique, it's called face with the heart. Mm -hmm. Mastering authentic beauty makeup, I, I really focus on that. In fact, I was just, before we talked, I was writing a blog about, I'm on to skin now um, and talking about the heart of the face and how do you neutralize within that and why you don't want to work past it in terms of your well, you you want to blend past the heart, heart heart line, but you don't want your contour and blush to come inside because then it just interferes with, with your face, with your features. So I think I had that in my mind as I was putting on my lipstick today because wasn't there a thing in the book about? Yes, about what? About the heart of the. the... Well, so some people want their lips to look more full. Mm. So my what I say is eyes wide mm -hmm. and then lips tall. Mm -hmm. um, you don't want your lips to be wide and your eyes wide because then your your features come out more like a box and a more feminine shape is has has a softer slant to it like this. Makes mm -hmm. sense? Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. So I call it the pillow of the lip, the center of the mouth. If you want to – if you need to or want to create balance in the size of your lips, um, then techniques for making the lips look fuller in the center uh, really work. The other trick, though, is to – cut in the corners of the mouth mm. just a little bit because when you trim the corners the center looks more full it's just like contrast right um then we're talking about contrast of colors if you cut the lip here this is going to look more full um just because there's less lip here and more lip here if that mm -hmm. makes sense. yes yes yeah. well yeah it's all about the angle and how it's yeah. i love the word balance too balance in terms of the the, the size of the mouth or just in general in general, you know, the, the, yeah. you know, balancing your face, balancing your features and all of those things. Yeah. And then it doesn't stop there, though. So today you have you're wearing uh, earrings that are hanging below your ear. And so when we look at you, we notice them almost immediately because they're below your ear. So the temperature of that metal, meaning mm -hmm. gold is a warm or silver is a cool. It, you really want it to relate to the temperature of your lipstick because it's right in line. Mm. And, and, yeah, but what the cool thing about that is, if you know what you're wearing here, then it helps you pick. Well, should I wear this color or this color today? That should answer your question, because you know, yes. So I have a question about that because you know I went to image consulting training and we talked a lot about color and warm and cool. What is your feeling about playing with makeup that goes against? whether you're warm or cool. Say you have very warm skin and you wear, um, and I don't know, I don't, I don't know if she's warm or cool, but I saw Jennifer Hudson on American uh, Idol at the finale and I've seen her wear it before. She wore this like bright 
purple lipstick and it was uh-huh. really cool really dramatic but i was like i don't know if that work i don't know if that goes with their skin tone necessarily but it looked really cool on camera right so, so yeah what's your yeah. feeling about that about going against skin type so you remember yes you so you're not really going against you're either complimenting or contrasting and either is fine mm. so when you compliment what you're wearing it softens you Mm. So if you're using colors and, and and it's easy to tell your eyeshadow, your blush, just hold it up next to your face and look at the the temperature of your skin and the temperature of the color. And if it's if it's contrasting, it's it's going to it's going to separate from your skin a little bit. Usually mo- mo- most people have more yellow in their skin than blue. Not all, but most people. So when you use like a bronze or a copper, it kind of melts into your skin because it's part of your coloring. But the minute you use a pink or a purple, it's got more blue in it, so it's going to pop more. So it's not. So it's a it's a good way if you want your makeup if you want to look kind of woken up and refreshed and alive. Using those contrast colors really are helpful. You don't have to wear them in a big way, but instead of using like a soft glow here on your of, of a like a soft copper, you use like a soft lavender. And all of a sudden, we see you, but you're kind of a little more, you look more alive, basically. Mm, Does that make it. sense? Yes, and you're such an artist, Chris. I can tell. I can tell by the way you move and the way you put your readers in. I mean, the whole, <laughs> whole thing. I've so, done a lot of makeup. <laughs> so I wanted to ask you how you got into this. I mean, you know, it's not every day that someone wakes up and says, "I want to be a makeup artist." So how did you get into it and stay with it? Right. Well, yeah, exactly, and stay with it. So mm-hmm. my, uh, I grew, grew up by doing a lot of theater. I got my master's in theater when I moved to San Francisco. Um, worked with a couple theater companies and decided to make my own, form my own with a group of, you know, li- you know, my like mind people. And I needed a day job only because theater doesn't pay. We were doing all original stuff. So I was artistic in that sense, too. Mm-hmm. So someone said, well, why don't you do, you know, your theater? Why don't you do makeup? I'm like, I don't know anything about beauty makeup. So I took a two day seminar mm-hmm. and the woman sent me into stores and I started doing it. And, uh, you know, it was great because it paid good. Mm-hmm. And um, and it was part time. So I liked it. So I did it for a while. And that's when Chanel scouted me and said, hey, you know, we want to talk to you. And I had no idea I was interviewing for a national artist position when they interviewed me. Uh, I said, oh, great makeup artist. But anyway, I got got the job. And then the more I did it, the more I liked it. And um, and I got better at it. And I enjoyed sort of the relationship I had with women and and not just women. I work with a lot of men, too, um, Mm -hmm. in terms of helping them understand makeup better. And so I was on this journey because I didn't like what I saw people doing. And so really everybody that came to me sort of helped me get better at what I do Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of, you know, how how I share my expertise. Um, And then eventually I kind of burned out being a director of a theater company. It's a lot of work. Not that being having your own business isn't, but you know, it does pay the bills a little bit better. So I decided to do makeup gourmet full time. I formed the the company and, uh, and just, I, I just kind of let it grow at its own pace for a while. And then about eight years ago, I really, I, I kicked it into gear. I, I got a studio and doing all my videos there and stuff. And I created my brand makeup. Gourmet. I have great products. They're all, I'm, you know, it, all made in the USA. I started my company when we were in, you know, the foreclosure thing was killing us, 2008. And I, I mean, when I started the studio, yeah. And I thought, I'm going to only buy American products, only sell American made products, USA made products, because I want to stimulate our economy. Mm. And I, it felt really good for me to do that. And I didn't even like think about it. I just, one of those things that just said, this is what you're going to do, you know? And so that's mm. what I do. Um, I love and it. so it's, it, so I enjoy it. And obviously you can tell I'm passionate about it. I love helping people get it. In fact, I just got an email two days ago from a, you know, a, a client who said, I got, just got to tell you, you know, I saw you a few months ago and I'm doing it and I'm getting compliments and I feel like, you know, I feel better about it. You know, it's just that kind of validation of like, mm-hmm. good. And- yeah. I think that's wonderful. And I think that for a lot of people that I've worked with, whether it's, you know, image consulting, but a lot of speaking and even branding about taking ownership of who you are when that light bulb goes on. And sometimes it's from the inside out. Sometimes you're working on the inner stuff to clear that out, to bring it maybe, maybe from an acting perspective, you know, to bring out the character, but it can go the other way too, where you take someone to a photo shoot and they see that 
picture of themselves and they're like, whoa, and then they start to feel it. So sometimes, don't you think that sometimes it's from the outside in and sometimes it's from the inside out? It's I do before and afters. I do a lot of what it's called a premium makeup lesson. It's hands on. So mm -hmm. I shoot a before, then after the shoot the after. And I mean, I go, whoa, and they're not wearing that much makeup. I mean, you look at yeah. them and they look just, you know what I mean? Normal, whatever that means. But, but we look at the pictures together and we look at each other going, oh my God. We, you know how that happened because we we use such a small amount of makeup, but we thing is we put everything in the right place, you know, and we're very specific with intensity and you know, so so all those elements. It's a dynamic equation, but once you have it, it really makes makeup easier um, mm -hmm. because basically your face doesn't change. So you know you get the technique. Once you know the techniques, you can do the dramatic or the natural, just depending on the you know contrast of colors, and you choose the temperature depending on if you want to be brighter or if you want to be softer. You know, mm -hmm. it's just this nice little instrument you can play. Hi everyone, I hope you're enjoying the show. There's still more great content to come, but I wanted to take just a minute to talk to you about a new course I've created called Close Any Room. You may have noticed that all of my guests know how to speak about their businesses in a clear and compelling way. But that's something a lot of entrepreneurs struggle with. And it's something you need to know how to do so you can convert your audience into more sales. And that's why I've created this course. It's a six week audio course to teach you how to craft a signature talk so that you can authentically give value and close more of your audience from the stage. In the class, you learn how to create a clear and compelling point of view, how to organize your content and give great value to your audience without giving away the farm, how to structure your talk so that it seamlessly closes your audience at the end without feeling salesy. And I also give you templates and instructions how to create marketing materials, a speaker sheet, and all kinds of sign-up sheets when you're giving your talks. And finally, what everybody's hot to know, I also give you tips and resources on how to find speaking gigs. It's an all-inclusive course so that you can start closing and selling more from the stage. And as my free gift to you for tuning into the podcast, I'm giving you my free webinar, also called Close Any Room, and you can listen to it at clearvoicebranding.com forward slash close dash any dash room. And it will give you lots of tips and information to get you started on how to create that signature talk that sells. Okay, we're going to get back to the show now. There's still more great content to come. Thanks for joining me. So if somebody wants to come and have a lesson with you, if they want to find out more about your products, how can they get in touch with you? So locally, I'm in San Francisco, makeupgourmet.com. They can go to my website and, and sign on. I do Skype consultations as well. So, okay. I do, you know, women all over the world. Also, with my business, because, you, you know, you can only work with so many people, as you know, uh, you know, one-on-one -on -one or what have you. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I... Um, I have great videos online. They're all based on the chapters in my book. And so my goal is that if you need me, I'm always there for you. You know, you go online, how do I do those eyebrows again? And you can watch these great videos that I'm using the same text from the book that's in, it's on the videos. You know, what I'm saying is what's happening there. And so you really go, got it. And mm. so you really can't forget. People say, should I write this down? I'm like, don't. There's mm. a book. I would get the book. <laughs> There's a book. There's an app. <laughs> I, I've, done, I've done all the writing. I've done the videos. Let me, what you need to learn is muscle memory. What you need to learn is because I because I work with straight lines more than curved lines, and people don't quite understand that concept until they see the difference, and then they go, "Oh my God, that's a trip!" But I love it, so I'm gonna do it forever. Mm, I love that. So I, I wrote it in the chat. Oh, I spelled it wrong. I've got to do that again. Makeupgourmet.com. Yeah. Um, I put a J in there, but I have another question. Um, so you've worked with people who are big stars, right? right? What if you don't want to look just natural? What if you're, you know, what if you've got that um, muscle memory of like makeup face, makeup face, and you want, you know, jazz hands, the whole, you want the spotlight, you want to be on stage, you want to be in the media, you want to, you know, you want that JLo presence. What, right. Then what? Go for it. So what would you do? What would be like your top two tips to be like, turn on the volume for like really showy. Huh. So, you know, you mentioned it earlier. One of the things that really catches our eye is um, 
illuminated skin, glowy skin. So mm -hmm. to really give yourself really nice reflection, you could do it with a with a soft gold gold or a pale pink, you know, depending on the energy you want. But shining up the face is really nice. Um, I mean, because you, what you're saying is jazz hands. I mean, you're, you're talking about, for me, what sounds like big makeup. So you have to go for things that, you know, that can't be detailed. They have their, their larger presence. Well, I'm thinking um, about for people who want to, because I work with a lot of speakers, for people who are, I'm going on tour, I'm going to be, you know, traveling around the country with women who are speaking on stage in big right. rooms. So they, they need, you know, they can't, they have to be seen from the back of the room, right? From the back of the hall. So like how they can still look, you know, like themselves, but really have that extra presence. Well, I would suggest to them to just heighten the intensity of the colors that they're using. Because mm -hmm. the minute you try to go beyond your own features, you look mm -hmm. silly. You look mm -hmm. like a clown. So what mm -hmm. you need to do is you need to under understand your anatomy, but, but intensify and contrast, you know, the colors that you're using. My blog is really good. I The last two ones I just did, you know, makeupgourmet.com forward slash blogs, um, I talk about those those two little easy steps you can do to really bring the eyes out that that – that uh, doesn't overwhelm the eyes. My, uh, I call it a wedge eyeliner because it makes the eye float out, modern contour. It's great on a more mature eye because we work really hard to try to get that crease up here, right? Mm -hmm. But sometimes as we mature, the skin just gets too soft, so it's kind of frustrating. So the modern contour is awesome because it really sweeps the eye out, but it's all we're contouring the eyelid, not the not the crease in the under mm -hmm. the bone. And I love it, it. So you still get the same effect, but on camera and on stage, it's really nice because it opens up the eye. Then you start connecting that little bit of a sweep underneath the eye. As long as you're making things bigger proportionally, don't just make one thing bigger. Make sure if you make one thing bigger on top, connect it to the bottom so the whole eye looks bigger. Because mm. when the makeup starts to separate from the face, you know, from the features, then we see the makeup and not, not you. And, right. and for me, that's just distracting. I don't, when I see someone doing that, I mean, they, I'm sure they're, you know, sweet, nice intelligent, all those things. Right. Um, but I'm distracted and I'm kind of like, why are you doing that? Mm, and even well, if I wasn't a makeup artist, I would say that people, yeah, people just, they need the education, right? They just don't know. Nobody wants to run. Nobody wants to walk around thinking they don't look good. They, they want to look good. They just don't know. Right. And they're shown in stores. Here's what good is mm. bang, shung, you know? And so, and, and, and until you are shown another way, you're, what you're going to do that because that's, that's what you know. And also the people that are modeling the makeup would look beautiful with a paper bag over their head, right? I mean, they're like 16 year old, beautiful, perfect skin, beautiful face structure. So if they put something on that doesn't look quite right, it's still good. They're still going to look pretty. So that doesn't work for everybody. Right. But yeah. Um, you know, it's funny models come. I did a lot of shows. Yeah. They, they shoot well, they, you know, they photograph well. Um, but some of them are very plain looking and and what that's good because you can do more stuff with them. Mm. You know, some models are no they have a real striking face or you know, but that's what they always look like because their their structure is so strong. Mm -hmm. I found that my most successful makeup was on people that were, you know, had smooth skin, but they, you know, they they're they weren't really unique or exotic or whatever. They were just an easy palette for me mm. to sort of, you know, create upon. Oh, well, that, that's so interesting. That's from a, that's really interesting perspective from the artiste, you know, like you're looking at the palette as some place to work and play and, and make your creation. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Yeah. And you only got 30 minutes, so you got to get busy. You know, that's how it is. They sit down, they're like, okay, she's got to look like this, go, you know, and that's your, you know, usually any, any time you're backstage or whatever. And if you're doing a full makeup, 30 minutes is like a luxury. You got to work fast. So that brings it. So how long should it take the average person to do their makeup if they're well, doing a decent job? I say, I say 10 minutes. You know 10. your face. You know your products. You know you know what's up. You know what you're wearing that day. You know you're going to compliment whatever you're going to do um, and where you're going. So what you want the effect of your makeup to be so it's appropriate. You know, are you going to the, you know, to the playground? Or are you going to speak in front of a group of 100 professionals? So you mm -hmm. know your makeup. And your, and your technique does not change. That's the thing. Okay. You're so good at what you're doing that you're just picking higher and lower intensity. Mm -hmm. You know, and it may sound boring, but that's your face. And if you don't do these techniques, you miss your face. So, mm. you you know, don't try to reinvent yourself every day. You can with the intensity of colors, but, but not with um, putting on makeup for somebody else's face 
on your face, you know, mm. honor yourself and celebrate how you put it on because it's fun. Yeah. So do you, are you, you know, it's like lips or eyes. What do you want to be the first thing that you see? Some people say lips, some people say eyes. What do you think? What do you think? Eyes. Okay, great. I think eyes, you want to connect, you want to communicate with people. So I think eyes are important. Um, mm -hmm. So there's balance makeup, which means we see eyes and lips at the same time. Maybe the lips just a little bit after the eyes, but barely. And, mm -hmm. and that goes by the intensity of the lip color um, uh, pairing with the intensity of the iris of the eye. That's what I work mm -hmm. with. Um, but there's trend makeup. And trend makeup is different. Um, Jennifer Hudson was wearing that purple lipstick, and you couldn't stop looking at it. Right. It was she was awesome. trending purple. Yeah. You know, not that purple is a trend, but I mean, she's trending purple. So you you look at that first thing. It's that thing that that stands out on someone's face. And that's also a, that most people wear trend makeup um, only because they don't complete their makeup. They don't balance it. So when you mm -hmm. see that, you notice one part of their makeup before another just because that's what they're doing. But some people do it on purpose. You know, the cat eye is a real good example, um, a real hot blush on the cheek. So you notice even though you notice everything, you notice that, you know, like a split second before everything else, mm. you know, so they want you to see that first. So who's doing it right? Like who is hot right now that you like, they're, they're nailing it. Me. <laughs> I'm doing it right. I love time. your makeup right now. It's beautiful. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so, you know, it's funny getting back to the, uh, so I don't watch the Academy Awards, um, you know, getting back to, who's who's doing things right or not or what have you you know i i swear to you i just don't follow because i just am not into celebrity worship at all i want who do i love julianne moore um and meryl streep you know that that coloring is the most unique coloring to work with and you have that coloring that you know that warmer hair color and fairer skin it's you makeup on you is hard because the range of colors that are really going to work for you is, is pretty narrow. Mm. Um, just, just that's my experience, but um, I, I love the way they look, but you know, I just probably think they're fine actors too. Oh yeah. Well, I love Julianne Moore. She's, you know, she does sometimes the, um, the really deep red and sometimes a little bit lighter and those her blue eyes. She's gorgeous. Well, gorgeous, she's like, gorgeous. And they're not doing anything. They're sitting there getting it done. Mm. Yeah. 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 But I know what you mean. But the, it's a great pat, like you said, it's a great palette to play with. You know, it's that yeah, strike. yeah. Off, usually, her makeup doesn't get in the way of her face. Mm. So when I see good, her, when I see her, I see her. That's a good meme for you. Don't let your makeup get in the way of your face. <laughs> Make a meme. That's a good meme for you. I love it. Okay, you're stranded on a desert island. You can only bring one make piece of makeup one item of makeup what is it sunblock i mean what else what else are you gonna wear um skin cancer is awful uh mm. i would i would protect your skin i mean and don't rely on your foundation that has spf 10 say oh my foundation's got it in it uh, uh, uh. because you know i you have to put on a thick layer of that foundation to get that 10 or you're only getting a two so i would say sunblock i know that it, it is a beauty thing because if we all lived in caves we would all have beautiful skin but since mm -hmm. we don't how can you you know maintain it you know i am though i go i go outdoors a lot and i like the sun i grew up on islands as a kid we didn't have sunblock so um you know i've seen some sun and i, I know the <laughs> difference i've seen some sun and i and i know people who uh you know who haven't seen sun uh, uh um bernadette peters mm, beautiful right? Yeah, 70s something or late 60s. You know, if you watch Mozart in the Jungle, she looks great. Mm -hmm. She looks great um, because umbrella, hat, yeah. you know, I mean, it takes work to have the sun not hit yeah. you. Yeah, it's like Nicole Kidman has that kind of skin too, that just porcelain, porcelain skin. So, so, but my beauty tip is the last thing you do is mascara always, unless when you put it on, it gets all over your face. But I call it Bambi the Lash. And rather than trying to make your lashes go up, what you do is you want to spread the lashes wide because the more spread you get with your lashes, the more we see them. So I do this technique called Bambi where I use the tip of the wand and I flick the outer lashes, the lashes outside the iris sideways. So they mm. break outside the eye and then I wiggle up the center, but then I flick the lashes on the inside of the eye in. 
Um, and then I go back to the outside. I want the outer lashes to have a little more mascara. So they, so the outer corner of your eye grabs my attention first. But you'll be amazed how much you can open it, open up your eyes. Don't try to lift your lashes with your mascara. Use a curler if that's what you want, but spread them wide. And, the, and it's amazing that li- it's almost like I just put some little false lashes on, didn't I? But they're you. Nice. Oh, I love that tip. I love that. Well, you've shared so many wonderful things with us. And I, I love your book. I love that you love women. I love that you love to make people feel authentic and to show their true beauty and not to hide themselves. I think that's a huge accomplishment, a huge gift to people to take ownership of their their inner beauty and have it expressed through their outer beauty and to give them the tools and the support to do that that they couldn't do on their own and sharing your expertise and and really being an expert in a field and sticking with it long enough to to have this deep knowledge I really appreciate you sharing your time. So I always ask my guests in this moment, because we're here together, we're sharing this time in this space right now. What are you most grateful for? Wow. That's a, that's, that's a good one. Um, I have a ritual every day that when I leave my studio Mm -hmm. and, and uh, my partner, she kind of like went, what are you doing? Cause I leave and I say everything I'm grateful for. Because mm. my studio has really allowed me to do that, but so many other things. Having your own business frees up your schedule. Mm. So I have a whole list. You know, I leave. I go, thank you, studio. Thank you, mom. Thank you, dad. Thank, thank you, family. Thank you, friends. Thank you, pets. Thank you, clients. Thank you, uh, you know, people who who teach me things I don't know. Uh, and I say it every single time I leave my studio. And people think I'm nuts, but I am grateful on a daily basis. Oh, I love it. So it sounds like you're very grateful for your studio. I mean, all of those things, but that that allows a lot of the other things to happen as well. Right, exactly. It, it's, yeah. it's a good, and I'm losing it. You know, I'm, I'm in San Francisco, and my lease is up, so we're looking for a new place. But it's not really the studio so much as the, you know, it's a creative space. Being in theater, right. you, you go into anything and you make it happen. And so I go another place; it's still going to happen. But just you know, thank you for. I know it's me. I mean, I know I'm really thanking me. You know, I'm mm, grateful for having that. the wherewithal to do something like that. But, you know, the studio is kind of the manifestation of that. I love that. I love that. You're, I love that you're thanking yourself. I love that and that you're sharing your gifts and expressing your creativity. And I'm really thankful that you came and shared your time with me today and all your expertise and all these fabulous tips and that I'm thankful that we've stayed connected over time and yeah. that we've formed this, you know, this professional relationship. I love it. So thank you so, so, so much. And I've put um, Makeup Gourmet in the chat. If you want to get in touch with Scott, that's, I mean, Chris, Scott, that's how you do it. And you have your Makeup Gourmet line and it's organic and it's USA made in the USA, all these wonderful things. So thank you so, so much for your time. And for my guests, I always offer my free webinar as my special thank you for joining us. And it's how you can become more paid as a speaker and you can get that at clearvoicebranding.com forward slash close dash any dash room so thank mm-hmm. you so much chris i'm sorry that i keep calling you scott it's chris scott chris scott chris hey, scott story of my life don't worry you are in good company <laughs> Well, I really appreciate your time coming on, and I think everybody should go check out all of your stuff. It's wonderful. Thank you so, so much. Likewise. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Thrive. I loved having you here. I love having you as part of my community. And if you're enjoying the show, I would love it if you share it with your friends on Twitter, on Facebook, or wherever they're hanging out. I also want to let you know you can leave me feedback or comments. I love hearing from you. Just post those at heatherpodeska.com. You can also leave suggestions for topics that you'd like to know more about, or if there's someone you'd really like to see on the show, let me know that as well. Okay, until next time, here's to hitting all your high notes. Take care. Bye-bye.